Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, this video was sent to me by a subscriber, and it kind of puts cold water onto all these frauditor myths that they like to spout out, and it could lead to some serious consequences if they continue with what they've been doing for all this time because well uh government officials and lawyers are beginning to grow tired of their antics and apparently there are already laws in place that frauditors don't seem to know about and well they probably won't uh believe exist anyway because they're too short-sighted to understand anything so let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy what this actual lawyer has to say. Say hello to my little friend. Remember Tony Montana and Scarface? Infamous line, right? Well, the feds have their little friend, and it's the Federal Cyber Harassment Cyber Stalking Statute, 2261A. And so far, that's the main difference between this actual attorney and uh, these so-called First Amendment auditors who claim to know the law, but every time they uh, present something, it is either out of context or complete misinformation. And a lot of the times they refuse to provide any citation whatsoever, while anybody who's been in the academic field, like lawyers or anybody like myself who's gone through university level courses, knows that you've always got to provide citations so people can actually look up what you're saying and you have the ability to back it up, like this lawyer does. 2B. And why am I talking about it? Because You've seen the First Amendment auditors, some of them go in, they film, they don't care what is said about it. They have a First Amendment right to film. It's a government building. It's a public space. And the signs are a mere inconvenience, a mere annoyance, don't have the force of law. Uh, don't believe that. That is not actually true. I know they like to think it's true, but um, no. No. And to be perfectly honest, the reason why they think those statutes are irrelevant is because they've never been punished using those statutes. If they would face consequences uh, from those statutes, then, well, they would understand that. But considering that a lot of people don't know how to prosecute these things, well, they tend to get away with it. If you obeyed to place a harder target, then, well, they would think twice about the going in there and acting like they own the place. And under the federal cyber harassment statute, if you dox somebody, if you send your followers on them to descend on them and, and aggravate them, it just takes two times. That's the continuity of purpose, just twice. And you have to use an electronic device and it's very, it's very widely described under the Wiretap Act. So, when you come in and you harass somebody and use electronic device, if it causes substantial emotional distress in the individual, the, it won't matter because the statute even says, well, for the reasonable person. So you could come across someone who says, I'm not really bothered by it. I don't really care and still wind up being convicted. And we're talking about five years and 250,000 in fines per incident. And I'm going to show you the Hendrickson decision that came down in 2023 here in the Ninth Circuit. They can go back even 13 years at trial to prove that this is the kind of stuff you do called motive, opportunity, knowledge, and stuff like that under the federal rules of evidence. And of course, we know that the First Amendment auditors love to keep a library of everything they do, which would only be used against them to get them convicted. Yeah, just look at Chris Cordova, his own videos were used against him in his most recent uh, trial and as a result he ended up losing so frauditors take a note of that if you're smart enough to do that uh, don't leave evidence of your crimes behind but you're going to do it anyway so let's can carry on so my point is is that harassment using an electronic device is not protected under the first amendment and has never been protected speech and you may think as a First Amendment auditor, what you're doing is protected because you believe it is, but your beliefs are not what's going to control. 
it'll be what is considered objectively reasonable. So let's take a look at the statute because although I'm not wishing it on anybody, I have a feeling that the feds are going to start rolling out this prosecution as more and more of this stuff comes to light. I mean, the more people that go to federal buildings and disrupt them, I mean, all they got to do is make a report to the FBI and the FBI could uh, put a case together. There's here in Orange County, there's a prosecution unit for the Department of Justice that handles these kinds of cases. Like I said, I'm working with the FBI and one right now for cyber harassment. You want to go live streaming? It's electronic. It's communicating electronic information. And then you engage in a course of conduct. Course of conduct is two or more instances under federal uh, the federal statute 2266 for the purposes of showing knowledge, intent, motive, opportunity, all the different ways that federal evidence allows things in. What, uh, they can go back many years. In fact, in the Hendrickson case, they went back 13 years to prove a course of conduct because it was unique to that person. And then your videos, which could go back for many years under Hendricks, Hendrickson, again, only the Ninth Circuit, uh, you could be finding those instances used as a pattern of conduct against you. I broke down the elements. Again, this is not legal advice. It says you have to have an intent to do it. But remember, your intent is not judged by how you feel about it. It's about how a, a reasonable person would feel about it. Number two, now, the, you know, any interactive computer service could include electronic devices, information systems, computer systems, whatever, that users can use. And then under Section 230F2, the Electronic Communications Service is defined under the Wiretap Act which provides users, any service which provides users that have the ability to send or receive wire electronic communications, all completely within there. And then two or more acts, 2266. And then you have to know that, although this is out of, out of I, I cited to the Fourth Circuit, I really shouldn't have, I should have gone to the Ninth Circuit, but I gave you the Hendricks decision. Here, if you're in California, if you're in the Ninth Circuit, especially California, uh, one of your First Amendment arguments would be, and I don't know, I've heard any of you use it, would be the anti-slap statute 425.16 because you're posting in a public medium you would fall under e3 as a defense any written or oral statement in writing made in the place open to the public or a public forum youtube is certainly a public forum but it has to be an issue of public interest so, and harassment is never going to be protected under the first amendment i decided to speak up on this because i cannot believe uh the ignorance of some of these auditors not all of them but some of them some of them really do want to know the law very well, but others just assume that because it's a First Amendment issue in their mind, they have the right to do what they want to do. If you were to walk into a DMV, Social Security office, a place like that, and stick your camera in their face and start filming them, and they tell you not to, and then you say, well, I'm not paying attention to you. I have a First Amendment right to do this. Well, Let's say you film an elderly man with a heart condition or you film a woman who's nursing a baby and she thinks she's got privacy in the corner where no one can see her and you happen just to pop up with your camera and startle her. And then they call the cops. There's two instances right there that would be enough potentially to trigger the statute. And now you're looking at five years. I mean, I hope they listen to me. I hope they understand. I'm not saying everything they do would come into the harassment statute, but sometimes some of it does. Anyway, the information's out there. I've made everyone aware of it. Hopefully uh, people will listen to what I have to say, or they can be captains on, on the Titanic and uh, take that ride as much as they want straight to a jail cell. I mean, it's really their choice. So in other words, we don't need to create new laws to uh, stop these First Amendment orders from harassing everybody in sight. There are already laws on the books that can take care of that. However, uh, these laws are not that well enforced and need to be used to their fullest extent in order to stop these idiots in their tracks. So let's do this. Let's start sharing this video and sharing these statutes with anybody who's experienced these idiotic First Amendment auditors, auditors, especially in government buildings, and make sure that they know that their actions will have consequences in the future. And hopefully, it'll put an end to this BS. But at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I found it informative. So... 
Be sure to subscribe to his channel, and I will see you on the next one.